welcome to Lawyer of the Week. Lawyer of the Week is creating a global community of lawyers, solicitors, and their support to inform and to encourage each other. My name is Pamela Deneuve, and please join us for our interview this week. Hi, my name is Pamela Deneuve, and I'd like to welcome you this week to Lawyer of the Week. And I'm very pleased today to have Edward Burke from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Ed, but first, let's. I want to say hello to him. Hello, Ed. How are you doing? Good, Pamela. How are you? We're doing great. Thank you so much for being the Lawyer of the Week. Oh, it's really an honor. Thank you. Yeah, I know you're busy, and, and I appreciate you making the time. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about Ed. Ed has been uh, with Marks Gray for over 18 years, and his practice focuses on communications law, First Amendment, news media, defamation and libel, misappropriation of images, public records, open government, employment law for employers and individuals, fair labor standards and hours claimed and compliance, trademark, copyright, registration and infringement, and civil litig litigation. And I know there's more, Ed. <laughs> um, I also want to tell you a little bit about his honors. Uh, he has been with the Best Lawyers in America, Employment for Individuals, 2013, 14, 15, and 16. And he's the member of the S Florida Super Lawyers, 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So thank you so much, Ed, for uh, being with us. Glad to be here, Pamela. Thank you. Um, I'd like to go ahead and ask you the um, Lawyer of the Week questions. And the first question is, what made you decide to become a lawyer? Um, always a good question. So I worked for about 10 years in journalism. And in that position, you know, in that job, I was a spectator. I saw courts, legislatures, um, governors, executive uh, officials, uh, all from the sidelines. And it was very interesting to me how all of those different institu institutions worked. So after uh, about 10 years, I said, all right, it's time to be a participant, not just a spectator. And I ended up in law school. Oh, that's really something. So you actually uh, wanted to be a part of that process. Yes. Yeah, it was very interesting to me, you know, as a journalist to see laws being made, to see the courts interpreting laws, to watch trials, criminal trials, or trials involving other important policies of the day uh, and learning about government it was always very interesting to me how our government works uh, law school enhanced that understanding obviously uh, oh, that's it allowed, cool. allowed me to be a participant in in uh, at least the court system that's great now i noticed that your per your um your practice focuses on media does your having been in journalism for 10 years have anything to do with that Oh, certainly it does. And that gives me uh, a unique value to clients, news media clients, uh, having been a journalist, having understood the, the processes that journalists have to go through, the news gathering challenges that they have, uh, having worked under deadlines. Uh, you know, I understand the, uh, the concerns of news media organizations. And, you know, I, I come from that come from those roots. And so uh, that gives me an automatic understanding of what the clients are, mm -hmm. uh, what their concerns are. Okay. So I'm, I, under, I imagine that gives you, that you have a lot of passion for that uh, area of law. I love this work. I really do. Uh, to me, uh, especially now more than ever, we need a strong news media. Uh, it's, it's not just a business. It's part of our democracy. And Thomas, Je Thomas Jefferson wrote about that. A lot of our founding fathers wrote about that. But if we don't have a strong and independent news media, um, you know, our government, we, we won't know what our government's up to. Uh, and we won't be able to challenge our government when uh, government either deviates from what the public, what the electorate wants from our, our elected officials, or when our government misbehaves. And that, you know, we know that happens from time to time. Oh, wow, that's great. Well, bring us to the next question. What can you tell us about your biggest wins and maybe your biggest challenges? 
Uh, sure. Uh, you know, we in Florida here have a wonderful set of laws having to do with open records and public meetings and open courts. And uh, we are the envy of many other states and jurisdictions. Yet there's constant pressure on those open records and open meetings laws to, to narrow them uh, because, you know, it's frankly inconvenient for uh, state agencies, public agencies to comply with these laws. Uh, it's expensive. Uh, they don't like it many times. Uh, and, and so, and then there are other reasons that, you know, legislators and others are trying to create exemptions to the openness that we have. So it's a constant battle. It's a constant, uh, uh, requires constant vigilance to uh, oppose efforts to close down these public records and public meetings laws. Uh, and, and so we're lucky to have uh, different organizations uh, in the Capitol in Tallahassee that lobby and monitor uh, legislation. Uh, and then, of course, the courts. Uh, almost every week we see a new opinion out of the courts around the state having to do with public records. Uh, Many of them are very good. The, the courts recognize the, the openness of the laws and that these public records, open meeting laws are to be uh, construed broadly. Uh, a few of them are not. Sometimes the courts get it wrong, just like any other organization. Uh, but it's a con it requires constant vigilance. It's, it's something that we enjoy, but we cannot take it for granted. Wow, that's really important. and I didn't really realize that. Well, uh, tell me what kind of legacy would you like to leave in your law practice? As, a, as an attorney and a representative advocate for news media organizations, I'm going to advocate and push for open government, uh, push for access to our government institutions, uh, clear the way for news gathering to take place, and do whatever else I can, uh, defending uh, in court if necessary, news organizations when they, when they are sued. I mean, news media law, news gathering law is really a very broad based uh, area. It includes uh, copyright, trademark, privacy, trespassing, uh, defamation, libel, uh, public records, open meetings, contract law, uh, employment law. You know, it, it's a very broad area. And so on any given day, depending on what the issue is for one of my, one of my clients, you know, I can be called upon to be. Uh, present and an advocate on one of those different er one or more of those different areas. It's, it's really something I love and I'm very grateful for the opportunities that I have in this area. Well, thank you. That's really great to hear, Ed. Um, now, just a little bit on a personal level, uh, name one thing that you like to do to relieve your stress. Uh, oh, stress. Stress, stress. We always <laughs> hear about stress, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, yoga is uh, my exercise of choice at this stage in my life, it really is terrific. Uh, it, it, you know, it looks easier than it is, believe me. It, I always get a really good workout when I go to a class. And, um, you know, it's good for stretching, it's good for breathing, it's good for uh, relaxation, and it's just a wonderful exercise. I can't recommend it enough. So, Ed, one final thing I'd like to ask you, what is there that you'd like the world of lawyers that might be watching this to know about you? Um, well, that's a big question. Uh, let's see, I, I suppose I'd, I'd want them to know how much uh, I really am grateful for the opportunity to be a lawyer. Uh, it's such an important part of uh, our, our society and culture. Uh, the, the image of the legal profession is, is not very good, which is unfortunate. Uh, but I tell you what, I'm, I work with uh, wonderful lawyers here at my firm. Uh, terrific lawyers who have high standards, and we expect that of each other uh, and of ourselves. Uh, and it's really a pleasure to work with lawyers who, even as adversaries in, in court, um, who are skilled at what they do, who are able to advocate for their clients in a way that is uh, respectable, that is uh, courteous even, uh, you know, determined, but still courteous. I think those are the best lawyers who can accomplish what they need to accomplish without engaging in offensive conduct. You know, our, our oath of attorney that we take to become a, an attorney in Florida uh, says that we will not engage in offensive conduct. And, and it's, you know, sometimes hard to say what's offensive and what isn't, uh, especially when you're advocating for a, a client or a position. Uh, 
but the attorneys who manage to do that, uh, I think, really are the best, and, and that's important. Wonderful. Thank you. Ed, thank you so much for being Lawyer of the Week. You're welcome, Pamela. Thank you. I really appreciate the chance. Thank you for joining Lawyer of the Week. We hope to see you again next week.